Hey what's up guys, my name is Achono, welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're going to be talking about move semantics. This is probably like the single most requested topic, so I'm happy that I'm finally getting to it. And today we're going to be more or less taking a look at an introduction to what move semantics is, because it's a very complex topic. The basics is really simple, but then what you can do with it and how it works in practice, We'll get to that stuff, don't worry. So first of all, make sure that you've seen my L values and R values video, because this is more or less going to be a continuation of that video. Now that we've learned what R values actually are and what R value references actually are, we can take a look at their single biggest use case, move semantics. To keep things simple, move semantics essentially just allow us to move objects around. And this wasn't possible before C++11 because C++11 introduced R value references, which are necessary for move semantics. The basic idea is that when we're writing C++ code, there are a lot of cases in which we don't really need to or want to necessarily copy an object from one place to another, but that's really the only place that we can get it from one place to another. So for example, if I'm passing an object into a function that then is going to take ownership of that object, I have no choice but to copy it. The same goes for when I want to return an object from a function. I still have to create that object inside that actual function and then actually return it, which means that again, I'm copying that data. Now, I don't really like to use return values as an example for this because there is of course something called return value optimization, which can kind of optimize that part of it and, and make it less of a problem. But with the first example, if I need to pass in an object, a new object that I'm constructing into some kind of function that takes ownership of it or whatever, I still need to unfortunately construct like essentially a throwaway object in the current stack frame, wherever I am, and then copy it into the function that I'm calling, which, which is not ideal because I don't actually need it here. I need it there, but I can't construct it there because I need to first construct it here and then pass it in. It becomes a huge mess. And sure, if your object just consists of like a couple of integers or something like that, then copying it is no big deal. But what if your object needs to like heap allocate memory or something like that? Like what if it's a string and if you need to copy it, well, you need to create a completely new heap allocation. That's not good. That becomes a heavy object to copy. And that is exactly where move semantics comes in. If we can just move the object instead of copying it, then our performance will be higher. And I promise you, once we dive in and take a look in a minute, you'll see that this is not nearly as difficult as it might seem. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. For those of you who don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of creative and curious people can come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They've got thousands of amazing classes for you guys to check out. And the best thing is they're so small and bite-sized and efficient that even if you're super busy like I am, you'll still find the time to learn something new, which of course is always important. Some of my personal favorite classes on Skillshare are the illustration and art related classes. But recently I found that they also have a number of excellent productivity related classes. And I think that Boosting your productivity is both one of the hardest and most rewarding things to do, so definitely check them out. And starting at less than $10 per month for an annual subscription, I think it's really great value, but if you guys wanna check out a two month free trial, then you can by clicking the link in the description below. Huge thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So, move semantics. Let's dive in and take a look at what all the fuss is about. Let's write a class that's going to serve as an example to demonstrate why exactly we might want to move something. So I'm just going to write a very basic string class that might look something like this. This is not by any means going to be like a proper way to write a string class. In fact, I might make a video on that sometime in the future, but let's just say that we have a class which has a char pointer of data as well as some kind of size. This is our actual string data. So what we want to do here when we take in a const char pointer like this is essentially set the size to be the string length. So whatever the length of this string is, that's how many characters we might want. We probably want a null termination character as well, but we'll just skip that for the purposes of this example, because again, this is about move semantics and not necessarily about how to write a proper string class. And then into here, I'll just do a basic mem copy to move all of the data in from the source string here into our data buffer. So now that we have that, and I'll actually just add a little printf here, which just says created just so that we can later visualize our kind of code flow. So we have a basic constructor here that takes in a string and allocates memory and copies everything into that memory buffer. Now, inside the destructor, we might have something fairly simple that just simply deletes the data. And that's that's about it. That's our basic string class. Now let's write some other class, for example, maybe I'll call it entity, that's basically just going to consume our string. So inside the entity class, 
I might just have like a, a standard kind of const string reference here. Maybe this will be like the name of our entity. And then obviously we will store this. So I'll just write string m name here. And then I will simply just assign it like this. So at the moment for this to actually work properly, we need to write a copy constructor because if we just simply create a string over here, or in fact, let's go the easy way. I'll just say entity, entity, and then maybe call it Cherno like this. And we're using the implicit constructor here. So really what's happening is that, and I might leave it like that for clarity. But basically if, we're, if we just have some code like this, we still need some way of copying this string into this string. And so we need a copy constructor. So what I'll do is I'll write a copy constructor here. And this copy constructor is gonna be very similar to this constructor, I'll copy it in fact. Um, I'll just change this to copied, except obviously the size is just going to be other.size. And then everything else is pretty much the same, except of course, we just write other dot m data. So now we're just copying the string and we have a valid way to actually get it in here. If I run this code, and in fact, let's do one more thing. Let's just write a function called print name here. And then that needs some way of printing the name, which we can't actually do at the moment. So let's write a very basic function here called print. Now, because our string class is special and doesn't have a null termination character, what I'll actually do is loop through the size of the string and then print each character one by one. C for char, and then we'll do m data i. And then at the very end, I will just print a new line character. So now this we'll just call m name dot print. And we should have a very basic program now that will just basically just print Cherno. And if I run this code, you can see that we have created, copied and Cherno. So everything is in fact working. However, this is really the problem that we're addressing today. We have this copied line being printed, which of course means that our data is being copied. Now, why is this a problem? Well, the reason it's a problem is because you can see that to copy a string, we need to allocate memory on the heap. We have to call new char. That's not, that's not a good thing. It's definitely not terrible. And especially if you have just one copy like that, let me just quickly add this thing in here as well. It's not necessarily like the worst thing in the world, but remember the fact that we have to copy this it's a little bit ridiculous because I mean, look at, look at what we're doing. We're essentially creating an entity called Cherno here. And I mean, we just need some way of getting the string into here. And what does that do? Well, that, that has to allocate memory twice because we need to create it first in the scope of this function inside our main function, which is what happens over here. We're actually creating it inside the main function. And then we're passing it into this entity constructor, which then on this line over here has to actually copy it into here. Why can't we just move it into here? Why can't we just allocate the memory right here and just have it there? Or I mean, worst case scenario, because we can't really do that without getting access to the string and then doing stuff like that manually. Why can't we just still allocate it here in the main function, but then just move it into this space because now we want it to occupy this space. And the answer is, of course, we can. And that's where move semantics comes in. So what we need to do in this case is write a move constructor. So this is very similar to the copy constructor, except this takes in an R value reference, meaning a temporary. So this right here is a temporary. It's not an L value. It's not assigned to anything. It's just used up as a parameter for this actual entity constructor. So now by specifying this constructor, which by the way, we should specify with no accept. I mean, even Visual Studio is telling us because it's not really supposed to be throwing exceptions. Not that we really use them anyway, but just to be ultra correct, we'll do that. And by specifying this constructor, the hope is that eventually when we actually perform this copy, instead of copying, it will actually move. Now, in order for that to actually work, we need to also make sure that entity has a constructor that takes in a temporary. So instead of kind of doing that, what I'll do is I'll actually copy and paste this constructor. So I'll just add a new constructor that takes in a temporary like this. Now, hope of course, is that when we actually call this, because now that, now that this is a temporary and we're providing an R value reference constructor, since this is an R value, it will actually call this constructor now instead of this constructor. Now they are both the same. They do the same thing. They just assign name the same way. So nothing will change, but that's kind of the first step. So now we need to actually implement our move constructor. So what I'll do is I'll copy, in fact, I'll just copy everything and I'll show you how to do this. So we'll say moved over here. Size still gets copied the same way. And what we'll do is we'll actually copy data. But what we're doing here is instead of actually allocating a new buffer of data and copying everything individually, copying, copying that entire block of data into this new block of data, what we're doing instead is we're simply assigning the pointer. So we're taking the pointer to M data, which is the pointer to the existing buffer that we had in our original string. And now we're saying that this pointer that we have here in this new string instance that we've constructed, it actually points to the same data. So instead of allocating an entire new block of data and copying everything into it, 
we're just essentially pointing to the same block of data as the old string. Now this immediately presents a problem because we do still have two string instances. So what happens to the old one when it gets deleted? Well, it's gonna take the data with us. So what should we do? And that's exactly why a move constructor cannot end right here. You have to also take care of the other string, the other string instance, who you're basically taking control over. You're stealing all of that data. So to do that, we need to also assign mData to null pointer. That's kind of the, the major thing that we need to do. But also what we should do is assign size to be zero. So by doing so, we've basically created something called a hollow object. This old string is now essentially just in, an, in kind of like an empty state. And what will happen is when the old string instance gets destroyed, this delete mData will actually be deleting null pointer. And obviously deleting null pointer just doesn't do anything because there's nothing to delete. The pointer is pointing to null. So we've effectively just taken over that old string. Instead of doing a deep copy by copying all of the data and allocating new memory, we've essentially done a, a shallow copy. We've just kind of rewired the pointers. So now everything should be good, right? Let's run this and see what we get. And you can see that interestingly, we have created, copied, destroyed, and churno. So interestingly, the churno is being printed after destroyed because that's actually our temporary getting destroyed. So that seems to have functioned. This didn't crash or anything. However, we still have a copied, which is a little bit odd because, you know, I mean, we provided this constructor, what's going on? And the final answer is that what's actually happening is the copy constructor is still being called over here. When we actually assign name like this, it's actually still using this constructor. To get it to use the move constructor, you have to actually explicitly cast it to a temporary like this. And if we run this code, you'll see that we have a moved now instead of copied. So we've successfully only allocated memory once and managed to move the string into the entity class. Now in practice, you wouldn't really cast it to an R value reference like this. Instead, you would use something called std move, which essentially does the same thing, but we'll have an entire video on std move and all the stuff that's used for in the future. So let's run this code and you can see that we still have the same result, created, moved, destroyed, and then we've managed to print our string successfully. Everything seems to run. So the, the major point of this is that we've saved using this copy constructor to actually allocate a new block of memory and copy it. We've simply managed to move that instead. So we still only have a single allocation, which is great. Okay, so I hope that that was somewhat of a good introduction to move semantics. Of course, there are so many more things we could cover, such as std move, and don't worry, we will in future videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Don't forget that you can try out Skillshare free for two months by clicking the link in the description below, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.